three. Good morning. This is Friday Friends with Pastor Kimber. Today we're continuing with stories about Daniel. Last week it was Bell and the Dragon. This week it's from the actual book of Daniel in the Bible. King Belshazzar made a great festival for a thousand people, a thousand of his lords, and they were drinking wine together. Under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar commanded that they bring in the vessels of gold and silver that his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, so that the king and all his lords and his wives and his friends might drink from them. So they brought in the vessels of gold and silver that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and all his friends, they drank from them. They drank the wine and praised the gods of silver and gold and bronze and wood and stone. Immediately, the fingers of a human being, a human hand appeared and began to write on the plaster on the wall of the royal palace next to a lampstand. The king was watching the hand as it wrote. Then the king's face turned very pale and his thoughts terrified him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. He was that afraid. The king cried out to bring the enchanters, the Chaldeans and the diviners. And the king said to the wise ones of Babylon, whoever can read this writing and tell me its interpretation shall be clothed in purple and have a chain of gold around their neck and rank third in my kingdom. Then all the king's wise people came in, but they could not read the writing on the wall or give an interpretation to the king. King Belshazzar became greatly terrified and his face turned pale and his lords and his friends were perplexed. The queen, when she heard the discussion of the king and his friends, came in from the banquet hall. The queen said, O oh, king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts terrify you or your face grow pale. There is a man in your kingdom who is endowed with the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, he was found to have enlightenment, understanding, and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief of the magicians and the enchanters and the diviners because he had an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding. He can interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems. And solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king called Belpejar. Now, let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. So Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king said to Daniel, So you are Daniel, one of the exiles of Judah, whom my father the king brought here to live. I have heard of you, and that a spirit of the gods is in you, and that enlightenment, understanding, and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise people, the enchanters, have been brought in before me to read this writing on the wall and tell me what it says but they're not able to give me an answer. But I have heard that you have the gift of interpretation and of solving problems. Now, if you are able to read the writing on the wall and tell me its interpretation, you shall be clothed in purple, have a thick gold chain put around your neck and rank third in my kingdom. Daniel answered the king, you can keep your presence. Let your gifts be for yourself, or give your rewards to someone else. But nevertheless, I will read the writing on the wall and let you know what it says. O King, the Most High God, gave your father Nebuchadnezzar kingship, greatness, glory, majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all peoples and nations and languages trembled and feared before him. He killed those he wanted to kill, kept alive those he wanted to keep alive, honored those he wanted to honor, and made fun of those whom he wanted to make fun of. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he acted proudly, he was deposed from his kingly throne and his glory was taken away from him. He was driven from society and his mind was made like that of an animal. He dwelt with wild donkeys and he ate grass like an ox 
and his body was bathed with the dew of heaven until he learned that the Most High God was sovereign over the kingdom of human beings and set over it whomever he would want. And you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled your heart. Even though you knew all of this about your dad, you have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven. The vessels of the Lord's temple have been brought in before you, and you and your friends have drunk from them. You've drunk wine from them. You've praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, of iron, of wood, and of stone, which do not see or hear or know. But the God in whose power is your breath, and to whom belong all your ways, you've not honored, you've forgotten. So, from his presence, the hand was sent, and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mena, Mena, Tekel, and Parzin. I'll say that again. Mena, Mena, Tekel, and Parzin. This is the interpretation of the matter. All of these have to do with weight and money. Mena, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to other people, the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command and Daniel was clothed in purple. A chain of gold was put around his neck and a proclamation was made concerning him that he should rank third in all of the kingdom. Well, that very night the writing came true. King Belshazzar was killed. Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. And that's where the story ends.